Oh, hey guys, you wondering what I'm up to? I'm thinking the same thing. Because let me tell you, I have had this question so many times. What do you do to condition your body? How do you make sure that you're gonna be able to stand up, your body, your bones are gonna be able to stand up in a fight? Do you roll your shins with a rolling pin? Do you use a glass bottle and tap, 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 tap? Do you worry about your knuckles needing conditioning and bang them against hard boards? We're gonna talk about all of that in this episode and what I have done to condition my body to allow me to win all the titles behind me. You can't even see half of them, the other half are up there. What do I do to make my body strong? What don't I do? Quick intro first and then all the information right after. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. When I first started kickboxing, I was looking for ways to speed up the process of, of making my body harder, you know, that much better at dealing with impact because yeah, it hurts sometimes. So I did a little bit of research, talked to some people. I looked at using the rolling pin, glass bottles. Some of the guys that I knew were using hammers, tapping their shins. Some people were kicking bags that were just crazy hard, like concrete at the bottom. Everything inside the bag had settled. And every time you tapped it, it was just kind of like that, that's all you could do to avoid your, your shin from just bruising up. And the same thing goes with the knuckles. You know, people have asked me so many times, Gabriel, what do you do for your body for, from the shins up, the thighs, the, the abs, the, the knuckles? I wanna break each one down, talk about each area of the body, what I do to condition, what you should be doing to condition your body. And I wanna start with the shins because those are the ones that just seem so sensitive and are so difficult to condition over time. Now I'm just gonna break it down and tell you I have never, except for at the beginning of this episode, I have never used a rolling pin, I have never used a glass bottle, I've never taken a hammer and tap, tap, tapped on my shins. The simple reality is when you start this process of kickboxing or Muay Thai, MMA, your body is gonna need some conditioning time. So don't expect things to just go boom and all of a sudden you're, you're doing fine and you can take impact on the shins. It is a time process. The longer you do it, the harder your body will get, the more it'll be able to deal with that impact. So let's talk first about how do you condition your shins if you're not gonna take a hammer and tap them, if you're not gonna roll them out, what is the process of making them stronger? And it's very simple, guys. Every time you do a bag session, every time somebody holds tie pads for you, you are conditioning your shins. Even if it doesn't feel like it, it's bit by bit by bit. And you don't want to leave the gym with your shins mashed up because that's gonna impact your next training session. You wanna have a little bit, just maybe a little bit of soreness from smashing those tie pads over and over. And let's be real, if you're using a good set of tie pads, a nice hard one, they do get a little tender. But every time you kick them, every day you kick them, week after week, month after month, it becomes less and less painful and then all of a sudden a year or two has gone by and you can smash the pads a thousand times in a training session and you don't notice it. So if you're looking to condition your shins, get on the bag, work your technique, work your cardio, and your conditioning will just happen naturally from just putting in power shots, landing correctly. If you land every time you kick with your foot, you're not gonna condition your shins, but you shouldn't be landing with your foot every time. There is a time and a place for your foot impact, but there's also a time and a place for the shin impact. So when you're kicking the bag and when you're kicking those, those tie pads, make sure you are getting some shin impact on those objects. And some of you guys out there may have even been training for years already and are going, oh my gosh, like sometimes if I do light sparring with no shin pads, it still hurts a lot. Well, guess what? Every time I fight, my shins get hurt. It's, it's not gone away. I mean, I've had 40 plus fights. I've been training, taking impact on the shins for 20 years. And yes, I don't bang on them, but I can make it through a fight and be completely fine in the sense that I don't have to pull back and go, oh, my shin's too sore, I can't kick with it. That never happens. But after the fight, definitely, they are sore. If I do a hard sparring session and I throw my leg in and somebody blocks with their knee accidentally, yeah, it hurts a little bit. But do I fall or can I not continue? Definitely not. And overall, I think that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for our shins to be this piece of metal that you can go and kick trees with. Why do you need to kick a tree? What does that have to do with the sport? You're kicking Human, fl human flesh, you're not kicking anything crazy hard. So when you check in the fight, I've had times where I go, oh, that's gonna hurt a little bit later. 
But in the fight, when your adrenaline is pumping, you don't really notice that. It's not something that's high on your list of priorities. Oh, my shin's a little bruised. That might be sore tomorrow. So this idea that people have in kickboxing and Muay Thai that you need to condition your shins so you can walk up when you're completely cold and like kick a pole, a metal pole and deal with it. That's not the, that's not the game, that's not the sport. You know, your body when it's warmed up can deal with a lot. It can deal with a lot more when adrenaline is pumping. So make sure you recognize that if you are gonna compete, you don't need to have your body so conditioned that you can go around kicking poles. You'll be fine in the fight. Just do your pad work, do your bag work, put the power in. You get your cardio, your technique, and your conditioning on your shins when you do your kicks on the bag or on the pads. Now let's move up the body from the shins to the thighs. And the thighs, in my opinion, are a little different because yes, in sparring, you will take some low kick impact and that'll start the conditioning process. But the difference here between getting kicked in the thigh and taking impact on the shin is we're talking about bone versus muscle. And if you hit the bone too many times, I think for a long period of, of time, too dramatically, too much impact, I think at some point you're gonna actually start to have some, you're gonna suffer some consequences. Same thing if I go to the knuckles. If you bang too many times, you're probably gonna get arthritis. So you don't wanna finish your fight career and have shins that are like bumpy and wobbly. But the thigh, the thigh can take a lot of impact and you can bounce back the next day and not be damaged in the bone. You're gonna have sore muscles, but that will recover. So I am a big advocate for doing low kick conditioning outside of sparring. And I'm gonna throw a link right up here. I have a low kick conditioning video already out that you can explore a little further. But I will tell you that two to three times a week in training camp, I have one of my training partners come over. I probably kick each leg for I don't know, maybe a minute, a minute here, a minute there, and then I take a little break and I do one where they chop inside and outside, and we're going pretty hard. But again, it's muscle versus bone. I'm not gonna have dents in my bone up here. The muscle's protecting it, the, the deep bone's in there, so I can take that muscle impact for a long time and I don't think it's gonna have any repercussions long term in, in, in my damage that my body absorbs. So to me, Extra shin conditioning outside of our kickboxing training is a big no-no. Extra thigh conditioning at the end or beginning of class is a definite yes-yes because I've been doing it for years and I don't get hurt in my fights through low kicks. Now if we move up the body and we go to the torso, basically what I'm looking at here is which areas have muscle and which areas have more bone exposed. So if I go to my chest, I can just feel all the bones in there and getting hit a bunch in there I don't think is gonna have a lot of benefit. But getting my abs used to clenching up, being able to breathe out upon impact, I think that's very important and I do body conditioning. Whether it's one of my partners doing some, some, some punches to my stomach or I lay on my back and somebody takes a medicine ball and tosses it down, I think that is very beneficial and everybody who has a fight coming up should be doing it. Because again, just like the thighs, but unlike the shins, it won't lead to long-term damage. Now, very rarely, guys, if I know that I'm fighting somebody who has really good kicks and I know they're gonna be crashing into my arm, I'm worried about you know my shoulder muscles taking impact or maybe my, my, my bicep, tricep area or my forearms, I might have somebody kick me in the arms a little bit just, just to make everything just a little bit harder, a little bit more used to that impact. But it's not something that I do a lot and I definitely don't bang myself with a rolling pin over and over until you know I can't even lift my arm. So there are certain areas, basically muscle versus bone, and this is somewhere here where occasionally, like I said, only if I'm fighting a TIE fighter or something like that who I know is very good at kicks, then I might go back to this area and just beat it up a little bit. Now I want to finish with talking about the knuckles because that's something that somebody has recently asked me about, and in all honesty I've never ever conditioned my knuckles because we fight in gloves. We're not doing bare knuckle boxing. We're not doing, you know, Kyokushin or something where you're throwing a bunch of body punches and it might ricochet off somebody's elbow. We have protection. You don't need to condition your knuckles. Your knuckles are gonna be fine. If anything, if you're, you're banging away against a wall or a hard board, I think you're gonna bruise them. They kind of become inflamed. They, the, the, the muscle, the, sorry, the bones can just expand a little bit. It looks like when I've seen people who have done it, and I've just heard of people who've done this for years saying they have arthritis and their hands are sore and it's hard to close them or open them all the way. So you guys remember, we're not street fighters. We're, we're doing a game. We have protection on. There's no need to go and condition your hands, in my opinion. If you want to do it, 
I guess you can go for it, but it's unnecessary. And I think that time could be spent doing something else much more beneficial for your body. So guys, I hope this episode helped cover some of the conditioning questions you might have for your body. Definitely don't get taken in by the myths. When you hear people talking about conditioning their shins, that's the big one. You have to condition your shins with a rolling pin or tap it with a hammer. They don't know what they're talking about. The first question you can ask yourself is, do they have any pro kickboxing world titles? Because I have six. I've talked to many pro kickboxing world champions. Nobody does it. I haven't talked to anybody who does this. And they're winning. They're the best in the world. You might as well listen to those guys, right? All right, guys. If you enjoyed this video, you enjoyed this episode, make sure you give it a like. Share it with somebody who might be making some mistakes trying to condition their shins, long-term damage. I really appreciate you guys spreading this video around. If you haven't already, make sure you get subscribed, and I'll see you back here soon for another episode.